Hello guys, good evening everyone. Welcome to our English class. Hello, hello. Guys, welcome one more time to our English class. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Also getting ready to learn English and maximize your skills. Well, so I'm really happy to know, to know that most of you are here on time. You know, the responsibility to be in class is really important. And also we are just getting ready to learn and work a lot. So I just want to know, guys, how are you? So, Osman, how are you today? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for asking me. Uh, this day was was fine uh, or good. Uh, always with a lot of meeting. Uh, also, uh, a lot of activity to do. Uh, many plans. Uh, we... Uh, Currently, we had we have work we have working uh, for the next year. We had to prepare prepare uh, personnel for the January, uh, February, the next year. Yes. Wow, so it's very interesting. So that's means you have a lot of things to do, a lot of work. Yes, yes, yeah, I, because yeah, because we had to prepare and to do plans for hiring. Hiring people, uh, this the uh, the next week, for example, we we need to hiring uh, around one hundred people, yes, yeah. and and then we had to prepare a, a training in different operation, because uh, in in the beginning of the year, uh, many people uh, leave leave uh, the, the 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 company. Yes, uh, this this concept is a uh, turnover. Yes, we we had turnover uh, every 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 year at the beginning. For this reason, we had to prepare personnel uh, on December uh, to prepare the next year. The next year. Yeah. Oh my God. So that's mean that you have a lot of things to do. And also, oh, I was listening to the different things you had to do during the process. And I was like uh, trying to think, you know, in order to do everything, you had to have a very important schedule about what to do when, when at this time, at this time I'm going to be doing this one. So you had to have a plan about what things to do in a specific time, right? And uh, but yes. that's good. So you, and yeah. something interesting that can help you is like you have experience, you know what to do, yeah. you know the process with it. So it's not going to be, so difficult the most important is to work with the time 
not to like get delayed. Like for example, if I'm saying, um, well, I have to do this one. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have time because I have to do something else. So people get some trouble. So if you manage the time for everything to do, everything will be successful. The level of organization you have and people around you, right? Yes, yes, teacher. Yes. Thank you so much, Osman, for sharing us the your activities yes. and also in uh, something that called my attention is that you were talking about new amplages, the future amplages. You're higher in the hiring process, so we have been talking about that one, right? So people who who can provide a uh, with their skills a plus to the company, so you will see these things specifically. Okay, let's welcome to all of us we have here, Jose, Manuel, uh, Ricardo, Mirna, Sefredo, Carlos Ernesto, and Kevin, and Edwin too. Welcome to everyone. And as we all say, we are in the last classes. I know that it's been a great process a lot. And um, I, I was, there's something that I just want to tell you about this, the program that I admire a lot. So I admire this program because it is advanced because we study English all the time, every day from Monday to Fridays working two hours a day, it's incredible. Um, with well, the advantage about this kind of programs is that it can help you to maximize your skills. And also there are some places in which people take too much time studying, and but they don't learn, so they should be more practical. And um, I'm being honest with you guys, I have seen an incredible improvement in your process of learning, especially when you talk in class, when you express your ideas and thoughts, that's one of the ways. And we don't stop uh, learning, we'll the time we do that, and I'm just gonna tell you, like many years, because I have around 16 years teaching English. Uh, when I just finished my first career, I was good at English. But in the process, you're learning. And not after you graduated. In the process, you learn. You need to practice every day, no matter if you study or not. For example, people who learn English for some circumstances, if they stop practicing, they will forget everything. So English is something that most of the time we have to do. Not at this level, but also watching TV, listening to music, where, uh, practicing, having conversations that can help you a lot. So I'm pretty sure, guys, that after this level, you will uh, continue improving different topics, contents, and everything. This um, level is a little bit more practical because most of the activities are to analyze, to socialize, to interpret, uh, learn, identify, and practice. Those things that can help us, especially in the process of improvement. So that's why we don't have to like stop. We always have to try in the activities. Well, let's see. I just uh, before starting, I just want to to ask you guys what we did yesterday in a volunteer to tell me what you remember we did in the class. Uh, I remember teacher that we we were studied studying about four words and those words are some a little bit difficult uh, about the definitions uh, I remember live lively liability 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 um and I don't remember what is what what are the other words, but we started that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, someone else that would like to you know to express what we did also because we studied grammar structures as part of the feedback. What other topics we started? Yes. And we talked uh, about that uh, clause, that independent clause, that when you have to join two independent clouds, remember that the last class we we were see that and the the words and the article we have to read the article and try to give you the summarize or the ideas and about the generation <laughs> and the and as Kevin said the the vocabulary that we have to find 
in in the dictionary. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That was very important. Yeah, as we said, uh, we study different vocabulary like liability. We said that part of the definitions about this word is like something a person or a company owns. It's usually a sum of money when we're talking about some possibility. We call it in English liability. And at the same time, we just like had a chance to talk about common ground. We talk about, sorry, some students joining. Uh, sorry, team. Okay, students are joining. Okay. So we talk about common ground. So we were uh, discussing the importance about the common ground that if, if two people or a group find common ground, they agree about something, especially when they don't agree about other things. So the most important about this, this vocabulary we said, the common ground, is that both parts should be in agreement. They, they have, a, have an agreement about something specifically. And we also had a chance to talk about compromise, this level an agreement or the settlement of a dispute that is reached by each um, side making. So we were talking about that. And other words that we started was advocacy, right? Advocacy is as an action that speaks in favor, also recommends or for a coast support or defense that we call advocacy. So we studied this vocabulary and uh, as part of the topics that we studied yesterday, we're going to continue guys working uh, specifically um, talking about the grammar structures. We'll talk about the coordinated conjunctions. As you said previously, we we're talking about two independent sentences. We have two independent sentences, but the goal is that we had to match, join the two independent sentences to make one sentence itself. For that one, we need to use the fanboys, the, that we call coordinated conjunctions. The function or the most important about a coordinated conjunction is like try to match two sentences by adding this coordinated conjunction. So uh, I'm just gonna share right now, as part of the presentations that I have here, the following thing. Always emphasizing about comparing assessed of both generation on the word placed. We will, we will continue guys talking a little bit about the, the gaps, the process between both generations and also comparing the assets to, of this point. And uh, there are some great speakers that I will share today and you will listen about those guys. And also we're gonna get some important clues about the process. So guys, uh, don't forget to have the camera on because it's really important. I always congratulate, I have here, for example, Mirna, I'm here, Sifredo, Rafael, Emerson, Juan Carlos, uh, giving a good testimony for like uh, having the camera on so we can see you. Say hello to the camera. Yes, I okay, thank you, Rafael. Nice, Juan Carlos, good to see you. It's actually good, right? I know that for some circumstances, some of you are like pretty busy, but it's important to have all classes to be connected because instructions given by Insofort, and we had to, in a way, to follow the instructions about this process. Uh, let's continue that case. Okay, so as part of the review about the grammar structures we have right here, so we just, we're talking about how to avoid random sentences. Uh, we talk about a comma before the created conjunctions that joins to independent clauses. Example, the gap generations that put uh, many amplages at the disadvantaged comma, but never an experienced amplages are supporting each other. So we have two independent sentences. But in that case, I need to make one sentence using the coordinated conjunctions. When we add the two coordinated conjunctions, we have to add the comma plus the coordinated conjunctions. In that example, we just highlight the coordinator, but, right? When two independent clauses are put together without a comma, a coordinated conjunction, uh, the result in our round on sentence, round on sentence says, caused or message to be difficult to read uh, by our audience. Look at the example, the run on. I read, this, I read the research about the generation gap. It is very interesting. And the correction is I, I read the, the research about the generation gap comma, and it is very interesting. So the, the most important thing is that we can also separate two sentences by adding a coordinated conjunction and a comma. Let's see, um, yesterday we were also talking about Ford and uh, Nor and Beth for the most important coordinated conjunctions we have. Plus, we also have or uh, yet, so, and we see some examples right now about this structure. 
and we had the chance to like to socialize important examples you could help me to select the best answers and i'm just gonna um look at this one i'm sorry Okay, so let's continue. I was actually, I don't know, checking some statements here. So we just had a chance to like socialize some sentences here, but because of the time, uh, we could um, work in some of them. We said in the first one that, uh, and so, and the first one we used and, then number two, we used uh, so, uh, see that you leave home early so you can reach the exams. And also we have the number three, like she reached home late and uh, yet um, she looked very energetic. And also we said that in the number four is that, do you like black olives or green ones, green olives? Number five is, I'm sure I locked the door. It is it's actually number five. I'm sure I locked the door, but I cannot remember if I looked the case. Number six, my friend and and I so um had a dinner at the Palatia house for it. It was the the last day before the the she moved to Delhi. So we're talking about this sentence. Look at the next. We saw also the number seven. Um, my cousin did not collect the clothes for the dairy cleaner. And also, and from the dry cleaner, nor did we said, nor did he buy the things required for the birthday party. So didn't uh, collect the clothes and didn't buy the things required for the birthday party. So the best answer was uh, nor in that case. And then we work in the number eight, like um, he had a lot of sweets to an extent that he could become sick yet. Um, he says he can have more. Right? And uh, we also checked the number nine because the last two examples, we couldn't uh, conclude them because of the time. So I want you to help me to check the following example here. The teacher did not ask you for uh, what? Because for or no, what do you think the number nine could be the best answer in that case? Help me with the number nine, please. I believe mm. it is or or the teacher did not ask for you or him. Mm, but it says the teacher didn't ask for you, but it says um mm -hmm. Is in negative nor? For me, it's nor teacher. Uh, the teacher didn't ask for you, and mm, okay, but look at that one. What about if we say the teacher didn't ask uh, for you and him, or also you I can say about him. But instead of that, you can also buy him. Um, the teacher didn't ask for you, but him perhaps could be also mentioned. So we can use but, we can use and as possible answers in that case. Nor is an uh, answer, teacher. But nor, nor. Is, yeah. Oh, the teacher didn't ask uh, for you and, and him. So, so in that case, nor um, I think it won't be appropriate to add because of the context. So we also okay. can use and also we can use by two, like two possible answers in that case. Number 10, I met my friend to Anna Naggard. On the front there, we went to the 
uh, trivalent these together. So what do you think would be the best answer in that case? Check what do you think would be the best choice in this case? And maybe and be sure. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And that will be the best choice. I met my friend at Anna Neckert, and from there we went especially to that beach. That's really good. So we, the most important is in this kind of statement is try to think and project uh what is the main idea about the statement. In that case, we also can choose the coordinated conjunction. The goal for this class is that we, we had to be experts, especially in this process. So we need to learn and know more about these structures. So in my case, I know that coordinated conjunctions are really good. Later, you will study uh, more about the subordinated conjunctions, that we have more vocabulary related to this. Okay, we have the next challenge. Select the best answers. So what I want you to do is to take a short time to uh, check the following uh, vocabulary, and you have to select the best answer for this seven statements. So I'm going to give you a brief time to check. And so you can tell me, teacher, I think the number one is this one. Uh, like examples, we can go out for dinner now. And or later, yet later, but later. So look at the context and try to select the best answer in that case. Uh, I don't know if you, can you see it completely or not? Yeah, it is in yes. full screen. Yes. Much better that the last, can the you last don't see complete. Uh, complete, uh, and what about in this way? Uh, I'm sorry, I was actually showing this. Uh, can you see this in this way, complete this statement? Mm, no. Yes, it is. But, but it is uh, it's in, in full screen. Um, let me try now. What about this side here? Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, yes. it's okay. All right, that's okay. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to analyze each statement and try to match according to the context, which could be the best part in that case. If you have any questions or doubt related to the vocabulary, I'll be more than glad to help you with that. So let's try. Let's do it.
I'm ready, teacher. Excellent, Kevin. Great job. So let's see. Uh, someone else is ready too? We are still checking the statements. Juan Carlos? Yes, ready. Sir. ready too. That's awesome. Okay, so let's see right now, according to um, the statements that we have studied, the first one. Uh, let's see. The, um, who wants to help me to read the, the first statement and the possible choices? I need a volunteer. Uh, me, teacher. Thank you. How about the, the first sentence, right? Yes. And the possible we can answer. go out for dinner now or later. That is correct. So in that case, the answer for the first one is letter A, because we have two choices. We have to choose or this one or this one. Which one could be the best choice in that case? Or is the best one? Number two, volunteer. Good night, teacher. Yes. Uh, John can't speak Spanish. He speaks Japanese, uh, but he can speak Spanish. That is correct. So the the coordinated conjunction but will be the best choice because contrast. Uh, one thing uh, he's not a, available to, or capable to do something, but in the other side he can do something else. So we use the coordinated conjunction but as the best choice. Thank you. Number three. Hey, teacher. Yep. I was late. So I decided to take a taxi to work. Yes, that is okay. Great job. So this is the best choice. I was late, so I decided to take a taxi. So you had to do something continuously without interruption. So connect the statements to continue with the same activity or the same things. Great job in that case. Let's move to the exercise number four. Volunteer. Yes, the number four. Yeah, about the number four, I took the the letter B. I am not sure really. My classmate didn't study for the test, nor she is still pass pass it. Mm, I look at the context because uh, we there there is no specific word that can help you to. Match the idea. I pick up jet t-shirt. Letter A, right? Letter A, jet. Yes, that is correct. So in that case, the, the letter e A is the most appropriate. My classmate didn't study for the test, yet she still passed. So because she didn't study, but she passed. So we need a uh, word, a coordinated conjunction. That, that says that besides uh, something that didn't do it, got a good result. And so yet would be the best choice. Like in Spanish you say, aunque así lo pasó, right? So which you can say, um, yet she still passed. So letter A would be the best choice for that. Okay, number five, help me with that. And the end, the company didn't make money, nor did it lose money. That is correct. So, because the first one didn't get something and did it lost money. So, two negative results. It says, did it lose money? So, negative in the first part and negative in the second part. So, that's mean that nor will be the best choice because it's negative. Number six. Letter A, issue, my pet. But it's cold and hungry for oh, help us to read this. Help us to read the sentence, please. My pet cat is cold and hungry. For it didn't come back home last night. That's great. Congratulations. So in that case, the we can see that that give us the reasons why 
something happened. Uh, my pet cat is calling hungry for it. It didn't come back home last night. So it's giving us the reason. If we want to know the reason about something, we used uh, the coordinated conjunction for it. Great job. And the last one, number seven, volunteer. Yeah, teacher, I have a question here about this, the, the number okay. six. Um, what is the meaning of four in the sentence in Spanish? So remember that English and Spanish have the different context. So yeah, yeah. When we're using, for example, in um, sentences in both languages, we have to contextualize the language. It's not going to be the same. And also in in Spanish could be like uh, debido a, so we use for it. Okay. Debido a, okay. a o con motivo de, a causa de, o porque también is like in Spanish. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, teacher. I got it. You're welcome. That's great. What about the number seven? Who wants to help me with that? Hello. Seoul is a large city. Yeah, and it is located in Asia. Asia. We talk about seals, right? Uh, we talk about seals. Yes, so Asia, right? So the best answer is, what was the best answer? I'm sorry. And? Yes, correct. And it's located. So uh, we just, and to match two different ideas. So the only reason is match, right? So number seven in that case is correct. Okay. Um, so you can see that by practice, we can also identify the following statements. We're going to share the next exercise. If you allow me a moment, I'm going to share the others. So, because as I told you, the most important is that all of us, we know how to use this vocabulary in a real context. And they will become experts about the, the coordinator conjunctions. Okay, let's continue with the rest of the statements. You will check the most valuable uh, choice, and then we're gonna compare the answers together. Let's go then.
Are you ready, guys? Yes. Yes, I'm ready, teacher. Great job, Dan. Cool. Let's see, Dan, what's the real um, possible answers we have here. Number nine, who wants to help me to, to answer this point? Volunteer, please. Right, teacher? Yes. Okay, I have some free time and an extra ticket. Do you want to see a movie? That is correct. Two similar ideas with different content, with similar content. So the letter A is the best answer. Great job in that case. Number 10. Me, teacher? Yes. Okay. I'm not, I'm not really hungry. So the apple pie looks delicious. Mm, but look at the context. Because there are two different things, like contrast. Okay. I don't know, teacher. I don't know what is the correct uh, cor cor answer. Okay, so we can also share. Don't worry. So maybe uh, maybe jet teacher. Uh, okay, there is... we need to separate the idea. Yes, that's correct. So okay. yet would be the best choice. I'm not really hungry. Um, yet uh, the apple pie looks delicious. Uh, remember that uh, yet in Spanish is like aunque, right? Aunque. So, the, but the person is not hungry, but he recognizes that the apple pie is delicious, but two different things. So that's why yet would be the best choice. So ignore won't match according to the context. Okay. Number 11 wants to help me. Don't worry, guys. The most important thing is that we can also learn here together in practice. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, me to share. Yes, thanks. Elephants are big, but blue whales are even bigger. Uh, even. Uh, even. Sorry, even bigger. Thank you. So, so the answer is letter. Uh, letter uh, C. C. Yes, but. The elephants are big, but the blue whales are even bigger. So we're contrasting two things. That's why the best choice is, but great job in that case. Number 12, who wants to help me with that? Me teacher, me teacher. This time, this has to be correct. Uh, number 12, the capital city of the U United States, not New York, nor is... Los Angeles. I don't know, teacher. Okay, that, <laughs> yeah, let's check that. Don't worry, don't worry. So, in that case, the answer is no, right? Yes, no. Okay. That's, that's correct because we are uh, showing two negative ideas. So, the capital of the United States, uh, not New York, and no Los Angeles. So, what's the capital of the United States? Who wants to give me the answer? Washington teacher. <laughs> exactly, Washington DC. Yes, Washington. You know, one of the things is that we are Salvadorians, we are good at the geography. We know a lot about countries, about different places. Teacher, uh, I have a question. If we want to analyze this sentence, what is the complement? Because I I did I don't remember some structure about nor is it Los, Los Angeles. Um. So, for example, the capital of the United States. No. So, it's like a question or so like a statement. No New York comma. So we have an idea, and the other one is in is it Los Angeles, right? So. Well, this sentence, it's giving us an idea that we are comparing two things in a negative way. So the capital city of the United States, no New York, nor um, it is Los Angeles. So but, uh, we we don't need to put is in New York, maybe uh, using yeah. a structure. Of course, in our, in our complete sentence, it would be the capital of the United States is not New York and it is 
it is Los Angeles. But the second sentence is okay because we're using nor. Nor it is okay. Los Angeles. So, but in the first one, is would be a good choice, obviously. Okay, okay yeah. I got it, teacher. Thank you. Yes. Number 13. I took the letter A. Can you help me carry these books? Yet, are you busy right now? Mm, but it doesn't match if we add yet. Because it's like, um, it's a request. You are requesting something. My second option is the letter C. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure, really. Yes, remember that the most important in this kind of statements is that we had to analyze the context check what's uh, the coordinated conjunction that match the idea because you cannot uh, attach one of them that does not doesn't have uh, any specific idea about it so in that case the best choice is letter c can you help me carry this books or are you busy right now so that's why the person requests if there is any availability for the other person to do that so or is the best choice in that case Okay, next, number 14, and who wants to help me to answer this part? I need a pen and some paper to write some notes. Yes, uh, we haven't used in, uh, you know, for some time. I need a pen and some paper to write some notes. That's okay. We have here the statement. And the last one, uh, the last one, who wants to help me to answer this? Yes. The, I choose that so teacher. Sam lives in France for two years, so he cannot speak French. Yes, that's okay. So he lives in France for two years, so he can speak French. If you can see, we use so because the first idea match with the second idea. So both of them are consecutive uh, situations. So he is he has been there and obviously that he speaks the language. So that's why so the context can help us to select so in that case. All right, guys, great job for the word done. It was like very interesting. So the most important is to be familiar with, um, with the structures. But before it, uh, coming back uh, with this exercise, I would like to ask you, do you have any questions or doubts or everything is okay for you about this structure? It's clear? Is it clear? I'm sorry, teacher. I'm sorry, teacher, for me, no. So you don't understand the structures or ideas? Oh, can you explain, help us with that? Hello? Mm, maybe the, the, the idea, teacher. I mean, remember that the goal is to know the meaning about this uh, coordinated conjunctions, because if we don't understand the context, we won't know how to use it in a sentence. For example, for that, uh, the use of for, when to use it. Remember that for give us a reason. Uh, it's like we say because. So we use for to use because. Uh, I, I, I'm going to play soccer for, I, uh, get a better soccer team, a better, uh, experience in a soccer team. So we use for to talk about a good reason. So we say because, and also, and we use and to connect two ideas that have a relationship. I play video games and I compete in a competition. So we used and for two, uh, two actions. And then we use nor to talk about two negative sentences. 
So I don't play video games, nor I don't entertain on television. So you say that you don't do this one and you don't do the other thing. So we use that. But it's for contrasting two ideas. Um, I, I like playing soccer, but I can't exercise right now. So you contrast ideas in that case. Oh, we have or to talk about two possible choices. Oh, I go to the gym or I go to the movies. So two ideas using or. We have yet to talk about and uh, some situations that maybe can happen or not. Like examples, uh, my brother just had his lunch yet he says he is still hungry. So he ate and yet he is still hungry. You say in Spanish? Pues él ya almorzó, aunque todavía tiene hambre. So you can see the context of yet is when there are two situations that are not complete. And we also use so to talk about two continuous actions or two actions that have the same relation. Like, um, I speak English, so I practice with my classmates. So those are the coordinated conjunctions. The goal in that case is to uh, practice the meaning and also use it to combine two sentences. So that is one of the ways in which we can uh, identify the coordinated conjunctions. I don't know if you have a doubt specifically with one of the coordinated conjunctions that you say, teacher, uh, being honest, I don't understand how to use so, or I don't understand how to use yet. Sorry, teacher. For me, I am confused when I use for. Could you repeat, please, for the use for? Oh, okay. Because because... I think that this is yeah. when you have a contract, but four for me is, is not clear. Okay. Well, it says that four, we combine uh, two parts of the sentence. Uh, Popeye could not make it to the party for the rain. It was saying in Spanish, like, él eh, no pudo ir a la fiesta porque o a causa de la lluvia, o debido a. So the word for is debido a. So with that means... It's like a because. It's like exactly. a, the reason that you you are doing. Uh, exactly. Yeah, because, like a because, okay. Exactly. That, that's what I said, that the, the meaning was a reason. You give a reason for something. That's why the meaning, the, the most appropriate is like um, uh, debido a. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any other one that you were like a little confused about the structure? No? No one else? So, well, as you know, the most important in that case is to, you know, to know how to use it and also the real meaning in um, in the statement. Okay, um, someone else that would like to, you know, ask about one specific coordinated conjunctions? Sure, we're going to ask to Osman. It's, uh, how do you feel, Osman, about one of them? For me, teacher, is so confused. Uh... Only when I had to use, uh, let me see, uh, jet, jet. This, okay. this word is so confused. Okay, in that case, my strategy is that you identify what could be the real meaning of, of that. Let, let me look for it. Yeah, this one, right? So it says yeah. that combining two phrases, it was raining, and yet sunny and bright, right? Uh, it's like the, the opposite. Uh, we say in Spanish, aunque. You know the meaning? So how can you translate the sentence? It was, it was raining, yet sunny and bright. So how this would be in Spanish? 
Also, we can use yet like uh, aún. Aunque. Ah, es aunque. Ok. So, estaba lloviendo, aunque estaba soleado y, y habría, y estaba como, había luz, right? The sprite. So, and that happens. So, sometimes it rains in some places, but it is sunny. So, you can see a contrast. You can see something opposite. O sea, estaba lloviendo, aunque estaba soleado, right? So, that's the context. My brother just had, mm -hmm. yes? In Spanish, the mean can be aunque and aún. For example, I, I remember uh, when I, when I, when somebody asked, are you ready? Uh, uh, no, not yet. Ah, but yet is in, in, in that is a different context because okay. in that context is todavía, right? The, the meaning about yet uh, is todavía. But in this coordinated conjunctions, it would be like um, a pesar de, right? Um, oh, also, okay, yet okay. it's like a pesar de, also. Different context, different context. Yes, aunque o a pesar de, so you can see the context. Okay. Eh, estaba lloviendo a pesar de que estaba soleado, por ejemplo. O estaba lloviendo um, aunque estaba soleado, right? Look at the, the other one. My brother just okay. had his lunch. A pesar okay, de... Sure. Right. So that, that will be. So, yes, we understand a little bit more when we know the meaning about the, the word itself. So it's like um, understandable. And we can also contextualize the definition with the sentence. Okay. Thank you. Someone else? Juan Carlos? Good. Uh, I do teacher, maybe I have a little confused when you saw, but uh, you explain uh, depend the, the context. Uh -huh. uh, maybe it is for that, I have a little confused. Um, in this case, the, 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 the conjunction, um, uh, where we, uh, when we need you saw. Okay, so is one of the easiest. Well, the meaning about so is like when we combine two ideas uh, about something, consecutive ideas. So I, I do this one and I do this one. So the two ideas have a relationship. Yes? We say in Spanish like uh, my mother bird left. The mother bird left. So um, my, well, so my brother took care of it. Okay, so you can also check the examples. Um, we use so to say, the, um, entonces, I, I learn English, so I will practice with my classmates. Um, we say, yo practico inglés, así que eh, practicaré con mis compañeros. Entonces, eso es okay. como así, right? So there's two, two okay. consecutive ideas. Yeah. Uh, if you join uh, two ideas, uh, the continuous idea. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Teacher, so es por eso. Is in, in Spanish, por eso? Or... Así que, also it has some. Que, entonces, por eso. Yeah, entonces too. Okay. For example, I did not find the measuring cups. So used measuring spoons to prepare the dough for the cake. So I would say, um, um, no, en, no encontré la, la taza medidora, así que usé una cuchara medidora, así que, o oh, entonces. So we can also use so to, to match. Both sentences have a similar relationship. Is that, okay? is that okay for you, the context about so? Yes or no? So tell me. <laughs> yes, it's okay, but uh, we need to more practice, I think. So. Of course, of course. Remember <laughs> that the real concepts we have to like add more details about the structure. And um, we were gonna be like sharing some other ideas. That's why you can see 
those sentences, uh, how can we use it in a real context? My recommendation is like keep on practicing to, because you know the meaning about them. And in our, some other sentences, you can also select. I will also, I will also guys, I will share um, a, a website in which you can also practice, specifically with the creative conjunctions. If you allow me, I, I'm going to send you guys extra material for you to practice. And then you will get familiar with the creative conjunctions. Give me one second Just to check um, using this structure. Yeah, so for some people, it's like a little bit um, challenging, but after practicing, it becomes pretty easy. That happens uh, since the very beginning. There are very interesting pages that can help us to identify these conjunctions. Let's see. Let me share with you guys this one. Okay, I will send you in um in a couple of minutes this one because there are like many pages that can be very helpful. I can assure here by this mean because you know that um, it is not possible because there are some specific rules when we present uh, some material here by this mean. But I will send you this one. I will be sharing this one further to check also tomorrow. We're gonna have another review related to this topic. Well, let's move to the next part of the class. We have a material to share, but before it, I want to request, well, something I need to check the attendance list. If you allow me a moment, I will be checking this one. Uh, give me one second, please.
Okay, let's see. Um, Carlos Alberto Dominguez. Eh, Carlos Ernesto Hernández. It's not here. Edwin Antonio Quinteros. Present. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present teacher. Thanks. Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Jorge. Jose Bernardo Lopez. He's not here. Uh, Jose Carlos Argueta. Present. Uh, thank you. Um, Jose Salvador Bernal. I'm here. Josh Manatidio Serrano. Present. Uh, Juan Carlos Herrera. Kevin Alfredo Lucero. Present. Nelson Alberto Peraza. Present. Okay. Uh, Osman Enrique Hernandez. Present teacher. Thanks. Rafael Alexander Serna. Present teacher. Thank you. Ricardo Ernesto Perez. Present teacher. Thank you. Sifrido Ernesto Gomez. Present. Uh, Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mirna Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present. Present teacher. Thank you. And um, Manuel Antonio Escamilla. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, guys, someone has the microphone activated. So can you check? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, let's continue. Let me uh, present the exercise. Okay, look at the following statements here. And I want you to check uh, which one could be the best answer in that case. So number one, help me to answer which, ones, which one could be the best choice to uh, complete the statement. Number one. But teacher, the boy wanted to go to the park, but he had homework to do before he could go. Okay, that is a good choice. Great. And what other choice can we use? Uh-huh. Yeah. But Yes, correct. So we can use but or we can use yet because both give yeah. us an important reference in the sentence. Okay, so but and yet are the best choices for that. Number two. Look at the context of every sentence. Or look at the context. Mm -hmm. Maybe so, because says she doesn't need cheese. So does she drink milk because she is lactose? Uh, la no. lactose? Look at the context know. because she's lactose intolerant. So that means both things are negative. 
Mm -hmm. Nor, mm -hmm. nor. In this case, we can use nor. She doesn't eat cheese, nor does she drink milk because she is lactose intolerant. Exactly. The context mm -hmm. tells us that she is not allowed to consume this kind of food related to milk because she's lactose intolerant. So in that case, the best choice will be nor because both represent negative for each part. So that's why it's important to know the context of each statement to make sure that we're using the right coordinated conjunction. Okay, look at the number three, please. Yes. Number three. Oh, too much time, too much time. Check number three. He can, he can buy a brand new charger, yeah, but he can he can borrow the charger from his sister. Mm, but this is not a contrast. We're talking about choices. Teacher, I, I, I think he can buy a brand new charger or he can borrow the charger from his sister. Exactly, because we have two choices. Or you can do this one, or you can do this. So um, it's the same prop, the same charger. Well, oh, they need a charger, so you have choices. Great job. Um, number four. Yes. Um, Maybe jet t-shirt. Um, look at the context. Uh, C or higher? So, sorry, what was that? So, so, so is a good choice, uh, definitely. So, Sally is um, studied intensively for her calculus test. So she didn't pass with a C or hider. So remember that, uh, for example, in America, US, they, uh, they score related to uh, A, B, or C. In that case, so will be the best choice according to the context. And the last one, number five. The last one. Yes. Maybe M. Andrew. Andrew wanted to quit his job. Um, but you can see that the sentence is like giving me but. A, a reason. I mean, there is a reason. But, but he wants to trial the word instead. No, because it's not a contrast. It's giving us a reason.
But the reason we, you, you say that is maybe G4, is it the reason? So the answer is? Four. <laughs> okay, you got it. Oh my That's God. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Okay, so, for be, be, yeah, because it's the reason or the. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Jose Carlos, is this a good idea to quit the job to travel around the world? What do you think? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I, I love it. As... Would you quit your job for traveling around the world? Uh, it depends. Okay, so that's okay. So we need to have a lot of money to travel around the world. That's okay. Yeah. So you can see, guys, the one recommendation for the uh, coordinated conjunctions or is to, to see the context of each statement. When we identify it so we can easily add uh, the coordinated conjunctions that we match two sentences. So that's why it's about practice. So we can also see statements and check which one could be the best choice. We can do that one by practice. Okay, we go with the next activity. Um, we have an important article and uh, I will share with you right now. So we have the following video, a very interesting video about how to get along with boomers, Gene Xers, and millennials. We had to analyze the context of the article, or in that case, the video, and we're gonna try to um, listen carefully and check the most important ideas. Well, watching the video, it's a very interesting video, but there's something that I just want to clarify with you guys, that the video takes too much time, so we're gonna try to take at least 10 minutes to read the most important. Um, After that we um, have seen the, the video, we're going to uh, work in the break of rooms and we're going to analyze the context of the video. Because the most important is to know about the message. There are important points to highlight in this, in this video. First one, that you listen a native accent. Number two is that you listen to speaker like giving some important information about the combination of, you know, uh, generations. You try to get some important ideas about what the speakers are saying and they're gonna allies each other what we understood and what we can learn about that. So this is one of the most valuable points about this video. So, well, let me share with you right now this one. And um, we're gonna try to take 10 minutes at least to read because the rest is just a brief explanation about the most important points. Uh, can you see the, the link? Yes, you should. Okay, so let's take a short time, listen, take notes, and then we're going to analyze the context and all, all, all the information that we have uh, listened from the speakers. Let's go.
Okay, students. Well, so we just like had a chance to listen to, uh, information very valuable for the video. And we're going to take a short time to socialize to important aspects about that. So for this, in a briefly way, I want you to go to the breaker rooms and also express what you understood. Or if you want to emphasize something important uh, given by the speaker, so you also can give that. The most important thing is you can express what you understood or what are the most valuable things. Um, so let's see right now the breaker rooms. We're going to make small groups. Because of the time, we're going to make groups of three members, okay? So you accept the invitation and you start like, okay, classmates, well, I start first. Well, I just want to talk about what uh, the information mentioned the video. Also, they talk about that millennials and also the baby boomers, they are very organized people. They said that they like to fight the words. So you can also express what you understood related to the video. So right now I'm sending you the, to the groups. You have a specific late five minutes and then we will go back to the main section. Let's go then. Okay, look at the screen because you had to accept the invitations right now for this. Uh, place of students for those who haven't joined the groups right now we're working in teams and I want you to join them because you haven't said anything and you are not uh, connected in the groups please let me know if you have some difficulties to connect Time is spent, is spent at work and the boomers, she talked about that they, the boomers, they are, they have a great friends and group of worker because they, they, they need to, to, to communicate with, as a face to face with the person and, 
they can learn with they they learned with the others methodology because in the school they 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 saw the language humanistic she told that they, that 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 is was the the boomer is is now that the 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 leadership in the the companies and about generation x she talked about the in, that they they have a uh, they love the notebooks and technology the powerpoint they can make sense just to see the picture uh they can follow with the instruction on traditional in environment uh, without in traditional environment uh, she talked about the millennium that millennials loves the technology because they grow up with technology uh, they love Steve Jobs and Elon Musk because he's the guru that technology and as I was she said that millennials uh, look at the information in YouTube uh, they use GRR R, R and B and Uber and they need to phone to connect with other people like and socialize with other people and with the cell phone for example a Snapchat they have to type in texting many times because they grow up with technology this is the note that I, that I have They compare. She compared that that the behavior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, what's <Hosman>? my? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I uh, I agree in your opinion. <laughs> and the uh, important the listener the video uh, for me is the part uh, I mentioned the the development and uh, the co-worker in the job, independence, the, the generation. And the comment uh, you mentioned, the, uh, the leadership is important. Independence, the, <clears throat> the generation, because it's important uh, and good leadership in, in the job. And development uh, is necessary the the whole step, the whole uh, generation, and the company adapter. He mentioned uh, the technology, social media, uh, other not just modern, more social media, because uh, the person is leader, leadership in the millennial uh, is necessary development, uh, uh, a leadership in one moment. Uh, this for me, this uh, part this is important in the independence, the generation. You Emerson, where else? I agree, Amir Nadia. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because I don't know. She talked about. Uh, a lot of things because she compared that maybe boomers with Gen X and and millennials. Yeah. She talked the behavior that that each generation have. I think, but this is in my opinion and your opinion. What do you understand that the video? <laughs> well, my opinion is very interesting. Very interesting when she said when she mentioned. Uh, uh, the boomers process information from the leaders, co-workers. Uh, in this case, I believe the the majority persons uh, learned for the experience of the others. In this case, uh, maybe I, and I uh, believe I, sometimes I I learned with the experience of the others, but the experience uh, in other person uh, have me echo and don't do it the same, don't do it the same action, for, for example, 
or not have a, a mistake. But well, Millennials, baby boomers, and 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 generate generate X. Mm -hmm. uh, in 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 the moment, um, in this case. For the age is very difficult because in, in this case, for example, he was 48 years old, yes. I think. Yes. And uh, yes, right yes. now, the many companies uh, prefer uh, young uh, people. Yes, no, the young people, the millennials. Yeah. Millennials people. Yeah. And the money is, is very important. Too because um, in this case, he said me that uh, many companies offered um, around uh, $500 for the employees. And well, when you um, are uh, engineering, for example, and in, in you need to work for uh, um, in the production area, uh, I don't know, it's very difficult. Yes. Yeah, uh, ju just just the young people the uh, the offer uh, mm, I think um they don't matter the the salary. I don't know because when you uh, uh, contract um uh young people uh, and you offer for example 400 for 450 dollars um uh, sometimes it, they uh, are agree. Uh, I don't know. It's very difficult. I say uh, yesterday for this uh, partner this uh, keep on calm and and wait for the new year. I don't know. Yes, I understand. Yeah, you have reason. Uh, uh, I I think the young people. Uh, generation, what are generation, for example, C, uh, maybe uh, can accept uh, a job with uh, salary slow, uh, low, low, lower, low, low, low salary. Yes, because they don't have many res many res responsibility. Uh, yes, uh, they don't don't have family. Uh, children's or uh, yes uh, this is a characteristic this new generation yes uh, they they it is important the money for them but noise the the, the mean because i think they want to feel fine feel free yes uh, enjoy the world they 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 want they want to feel comfortable, yes. yes. In our case, we need to, uh, for 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 us for us it's more important, uh, get a, a good salary, uh, stability. Uh, I don't know, maybe the environment cannot cannot can't be, uh, uh, good. But if, if the salary is is attractive uh, and the job gives stability, uh, I, I work, I work because we because uh, you and I have uh, many responsibility. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Imagine, uh, for example, in my case, um, we. I am uh, many responsibilities. Uh, I have four.
Okay, so we're gonna go back. Um, I was uh, listening. Most of you talking about the important information given in the video. Well, the speaker also gave some important aspects related to the generations, also some positive things that they have, uh, important abilities that is important to highlight, especially with generations. Obviously, the previous generation have more experience because of the years live and different context uh, also makes these people very valuable where they are. But these other generations are full of experience and full of things that make them very special. So I was actually, you know, very glad to listen to all of you discussing about this part, especially listening to uh, great speakers talking a little bit about important points. Okay, we'll check the attendance list. Uh, we're just going to uh, call your names. In a brief way, you say present, please. Uh, Carlos Alberto Dominguez. Carlos Ernesto Hernandez. Edwin Antonio Quinteros. Present. Thanks. Uh, Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, teacher. Uh, Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present, teacher. Thanks. Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present. Um, Jose Salvador Bernal. Present, teacher. Present. Thanks. Um, uh, Josman Atilio Serrano. Present, teacher. Uh, Juan Carlos Herrera. Present, teacher. Thanks. Uh, Kevin Alfredo Lucero. Present. Nelson Alberto Paraza. Present. Osman Enrique Hernandez. Present teacher. Rafael Alexander Serna. Present. Um, Ricardo Ernesto Perez. Present teacher. Thank you, Sifrida Ernesto Gomez. Present. Uh, Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present teacher. Thanks. Uh, Miss Myrna Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present. And Manuel Antonio Escamilla. Manduel. Okay, well, so we will conclude our class with the last questions because we have a couple of minutes, depending on the time we have here. So we're talking about the gaps in generations. It's important to highlight the first questions. Do you feel you have more of a generation gap with your mother, father, grandmother, or grandfather? And what do you think this is the case? For example, uh, some of you said, you know what? I don't know, but I like music from uh, 80s or 90s or 70s because of my father. So I, I like to dress like the way my mother did it or my father did it. Or also my grand my grandmother and my grandfather. The question is, uh, do you feel you have more of a generation gap with your mother, father, grandmother or grandfather? So who wants to like think about these questions? And you have the opportunity to, you know, to express here in the class. I think that I have a combination of both my grandmother or my grandfather or my father. So you can also have a freedom. Being honest, in, in my case, um, if I have like a little bit more generation gap, I think will be you know, my father, some things about values, right? Learn values from my father and my mother too. I didn't have the, the interaction with my my grandfather, but me, well, my grandmother, yes, I did. But also the values, the responsibility, and some important aspects, I did like my father. So what can you tell me about this question? Who wants to like share the, his or her experience about you have more of a generation gap of your father and mother or grandparents? Let's see, Osman, tell us. Um, do you think you have a more of a generation gap of your parents or grandparents? I'm sorry, teacher, what is the mean gap in, in this sentence? I I I don't I don't if you sure. have if you have more relationship 
um, with a generation, for example. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, in, in my case, I feel I had a more gap with my, my mother. Okay. You have learned many things from her. Yes, yes, because in my case, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't grow up uh, with a father. I, 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 I grew up only, only with my mother. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know. Okay. Thank you so much. What about? Let's see. We're going to choose two. Emerson, what about you, Emerson? So millennials, right? Yes, I am millennials. Okay, um, do you have a more connection with uh, your parents' generation or grandparents' generation, or you don't have um, this, uh, we could say the connection with this a specific generation? We could say in place. Actually, uh, I feel the connection with my same generation because, for example, in my in my job, all all co-workers are the same age, and we connected the 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 topic, different topics like well, actually. When I refer a uh, a caps, I believe that in with my parents, uh, your mother, your father, uh, I will believe in education since I have that I have had the opportunity to attend the university, which they don't don't do it. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, it's, it's something important, especially the background, the education of parents, and also the opportunities we have with education. It's important to identify. Well, tomorrow we're going to be continue. Well, we're going to continue socializing important aspects about generation gaps. And uh, actually, we're about to finish because of the time. Thank you. Congratulations, guys, for the work done. I hope to see you tomorrow. Two more classes, then we conclude this level so guys to have a beautiful night to all of you see you tomorrow thank you teacher thank you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. teacher just have a question do you know where is where we start the next course or not um no in that case okay. um you know the coordinations they are in charge of giving a specific dates as, okay. as you know we have different groups it, there are different, you know, dates. So I, I don't know exactly right now about this. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to ask them. Thank oh, you. Yes. Yes. That would be the best choice. Bye. Bye. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Bye.